not there I'd like a small word with you off the class. Same. Your room is okay? Yeah. Happy? Good. Tea you have given back? You gave it straight away to her. Okay, fantastic. Every day there are musical chairs. So I think somebody will be interested in a particular point and I look this side thinking that they are there but they have gone somewhere else. And then I get used to their new place and I look for them there. And then they say, I'm sitting in the back. <laughs> and, okay, no problem. It's interesting, that's all. It's all entertaining, you know. It's all mithya, so it's a lot of fun. You can have fun with it. Run, 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 yes. <laughs> Shall we start? Om Sada Shiva Samaram Tham Shankaracharya Madhyamam Asmada Acharya Paryantam Vande Guru Param Param Dayakaram Dayakaram Dantam dharma pravartakam pranamami dayanandam madhacharyavaram param om sahana vavatu sahana ubhunaktu sahaviryam haravavahai tejasvinavadhi tamas tuma vidvishavahai om shanti 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 you want to sit back there yeah come Discussion on the koshas. Once again, kosha is not covering. It's an as though covering. What does it cover? It does not cover atma. Nothing can cover atma. So therefore, what does the kosha cover? My understanding of atma. It as though covers. So kosha means a place of error. And for ease of understanding, the Shruti has uh, made it into five. Five common places where I make a mistake in identification of myself as finite. This is the problem. So this is why we have five uh, places. And no need to worry if you're not getting all of it right now because this is the, su the subject matter of the Taitariya Upanishad, which we are going to be studying in complete detail, line by line, word by word. So there the koshas are described in, in uh, full-fledged. Full 
here it is just a short introduction like i have said many times tattva bodha is the appetizer appetizer means you just have a little taste of it <laughs> you don't eat everything all at once have a little taste of it and then you want to know more oh this is not enough i want to know more that's the idea so we have finished two uh, koshas which are there hello annamaya and pranamaya annamaya and pranamaya we have finished and annamaya is uh, is the place of error thinking that i am as good as the body why because the body itself is called annamaya sthula shariram sthula sharira why because it is born of food sustained by food and then goes back to what food 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 all the way and then in the taitri upanishad it will say that the person who meditates like this because brahman is you know food is brahman annam brahma food is brahman that's why it says brahmarpanam brahma havihi we chant and annam brahma annam nanindyat we must not leave anything on our plates and we should not uh, do uh, so many things with regard to food there are rules and uh, i want to digress here a little bit when i remember uh, this what is that in the dining hall you know i have uh, somebody told me this one of the swamis said this that uh, uh, there was a request from one of the swamis if the students can please talk softly especially if you are sitting inside the hall so it's not that don't talk and just you know be like uh, depressed people having lunch and dinner but uh, just uh, talk uh, softly amongst yourself so that is also a way of honoring the food as brahman so there it says the one who worships an uh, uh, brahman as food in the form of food annam brahma iti the one who worships will have all kinds of good things to eat always <laughs> when even in the next life so if you are enjoying the food that means in your life that means you must have done anna brahma upasana meditation upon food as brahma same thing this all becomes a way of understanding ishvara you are not trying to trans get away from the body what is the point of getting away from the body and having what is called an out of body experience that is not what we want okay we don't want that even in the slightest bit what do we want we want to understand the unique connection of the atma with all these areas of error because everything is atma and for atma to be everything atma cannot be any one thing food is atma atma is not food body is atma atma is not just the body why because then it is the prana then if atma becomes the body then what is prana we have to say anatma no for prana is also atma atma is not just the prana why because atma then is described as manomaya is atma so same way you can do upasana on prana there are many many upasanas on prana as ishvara and that also has its own phala phala means little effects good effects punya so many things will come and then uh, long longevity is one of the effects of prana upasana then now the third kosha coming to today's uh, you know topic is manomaya maya means vikara modification so manomaya here and what is manomaya is described here it itself will tell us that manomaya is the five uh, yeah, yeah let us read uh, manascha jnanindriya panchakam vilitva yo bhavati saha manomaya koshah vilitva means having combined so the combination of the mind with the five organs of what knowledge sense organs with the five sense organs is what is what is known as 
manomaya kosha, another pitfall. Pitfall means confusion. Place of confusion where I think this is Atma, this is I. And here what is the I? The mind is the I. And what is this mind? Sankalpa vikalpatmakam manaha. The mind that is got one fancy right now. Oh, I think I'd like to have this. But then uh, soon after that, what happens? It just goes. Soon after that, it goes. And then uh, another fancy comes. So the fanciful mind is not I. But the fact that the mind has fancies and the mind is equipped to have all these fancies, what is that? That is because mind is blessed by Atma. Mind is definitely non-separate from Atma, but Atma cannot be just the mind. Atma is more than the mind. That is the idea. Atma is more than the mind. So the mind is more pervasive than prana. Mind pervades prana. Atma pervades mind. Like this, from the gross you go to more and more subtle. And so why Jnanendriya here? Jnanendriya because the fancies that arise... How do they arise? They arise only after uh, after having the sense organs be active. I am just sitting here minding my own business, trying to meditate. My eyes are closed. Suddenly, smell of pakodas frying comes. <laughs> then what happens? The desire arises in the mind. Because the sense organ of the smell went and caught this. The sense organ cannot be blamed. You cannot cut off the nose and say, why did you smell this pakodas frying when I was trying to meditate? <laughs> you cannot say that. Why? Because the nose is just a reporter. The nose, the eyes, they are reporters. They don't have desires. They are journalists. They just say, in this particular place, less than 10 yards away from you is this wonderful aroma coming. <laughs> and I cognize this aroma, the nostrils report, and the mind cognizes the aroma from aromas in the past. And the aromas in the past say, aha, that was a pleasant aroma. And the mind then says, I want, I want. But then the buddhi, which is nishchayatmika, we will say, see later, the buddhi's job is to say, yes, you want, but you can't have. Why? Because right now you said you are going to meditate for 48 minutes. What happened to your decision? And so the buddhi brings it back and the buddhi says, hold off. <laughs> hold off on all these things because right now you have a job to do. And the buddhi then gives the mind a, a, a job to do. And the mind in turn puts the presses the ignore button on the information that is being given by the nostrils. You see? So this is how the mind and the jnanendriyas combine to create various fancies. And these fancies have roots in the previous expressions. Previous experiences, vasanas, samskaras. Previous means both positive and negative. Positive, that which makes me run towards the source of that experience. Negative, that which makes me want to withdraw and run in the other direction. This is how the desires and all take place. This is how the desire fulfillment, there is a pressure for this desire fulfillment. And this is why we have to be this is how why we have to be vigilant. This is why the Manomaya is a very important trap that has to be understood in order to be overridden or avoided. This is how one falls into this trap of thinking, I'm as good as the mind. Mind is happy, I am happy. And the mind is actually kshanika, meaning. Never mind. Because every minute it changes. Every second it changes. The only thing for certain we can say about the mind is never mind. And then if this kind of a mind, I let this mind run my life ragged, then that means what? I am subject to the vagaries of the mind. 
this is pratibhasika i use the samskaras of past experiences to project on to the present my desires my fears and so therefore i see through a a, a distorted lens the jagat that is that is just here simply here that's all it is on top of this jagat i have various proje projections called adhyasa both positive and negative positive adhyasa is called shobhana adhyasa negative adhyasa is called ashobhana adhyasa both these are positive and negative projections respectively and i have these projections on the universe starting with my own body your own body is part of the universe every brilliantly unfolds but we are still in the tvam pada vichara in the analysis of the word i getting more and more refined more and more sophisticated analysis and so this is manomaya manomaya cannot be atma why because if the mind is fanciful the mind is subject to vagaries the mind is subject to change the mind is subject to projections but yet without atma there cannot be the presence of manomaya so the manomaya is is the is the one who is the uh the one who is indecisive the one who is subjective and then there is a decisive faculty which is even more subtler than the mind known as buddhi nischayatmika antakarana vritti is the definition of buddhi buddhi is that which takes me out of this fanciful state should i do this should i do that should i do this should i do that some people are permanently in this state always always on the horns of a dilemma maybe i should maybe i should not maybe i should maybe i should not that means what the buddhi has taken leave that's what without permission in america it is called a wall absent without leave or m i a missing in action because you can't be permanently like this maybe maybe not maybe maybe not yes no yes no you can't be like this permanently because this is the cause of sorrow imagine if you are like this permanently one will feel very hopeless and full of strife naturally in inwardly conflicted so that samshaya uh, has samshaya means these doubts of what to do how to do when to do why to do at some point have to be resolved it's okay to have doubts but at some point has to be resolved and the subtle way in which there is a mechanism a god given mechanism for the resolution of doubts that faculty in the mind in the antakarana is called buddhi nischayatmika antakarana vritti where finally you throw up your hands and say okay i'm just going to do this i'm going to take this course okay let anything happen i'm going to take this i'm going to do this so now what the decision has been made i am in rishikesh then you don't go back and forth then yeah. this is yeah then you don't keep going back and forth oh it's so hot oh i don't know oh i i, I think i should go back then you don't go back and forth then you tell the mind silence yeah gently softly you tell the mind now i have made this decision i'm going to carry this through this is called nischayatmika antakarana vritti which is buddhi so this buddhi along with the gnana indriyas is called vigyana maya kosha and why is it called vigyana maya kosha because janati finally i know the one who says i know 
and that knowledge is for certain. You will not say, I know, when you are in doubt. Should I do this? Should I do that? You will not say, I know. You say, I don't know. I'm not sure. But then the knowing faculty is called buddhi. I know. And there is one more small secret about this buddhi identification. When the person says, I know, when you say, I know, that means there is an agent of this knowing. Correct? You claim yourself as the agent. I am the one who is the, who is the knower. And the knower and the doer are connected with one another. The knower and doer are connected with one another. The knowership and the doership. Because pramatritvam, knowership, and kartritvam are cousins. They are, they are related to one another. Pramatritvam, knowership, and kartritvam are connected. How are they connected? Because once I know, what is the next step? To do. First, the fancy arises in the mind. And the buddhi then ratifies or validates this fancy by saying, okay, go ahead. Yes, this is a good thing to pursue. Go ahead. You got the green light from the buddhi. Now you are the knower. But then there is all these desires. Starting with the manomaya, there is full of all these desires. And so those desires need what? Need expression. And they need action. Both the expression and the action constitute the manomaya and the vijnanamaya respectively. Very interesting. First the desire has an expression and then the expression of the desire, you don't say, oh, how nice it will be to have an ice cream. Nobody sits quiet after that. After the thought arises and then you have determined that you are not lactose intolerant and that it is perfectly okay to indulge in this ice cream on a hot day. Can you keep quiet? No. You have to quickly go somewhere and Get the ice cream. This is exactly what is the, what happens. So I have to do that. So that therefore the knowership, that what is the knowership here? I have a desire for ice cream. Part one of knowership. It is a very hot day. Part two of this knowership. And this knowership leads to what? Do worship. No worship and do worship are connected because the expression of the desire, then the desire exercises a force, a vega. Vega means a force, a pressure to be fulfilled. Converting the jnata, the knower, into what? Karta. The jnata, the knower, becomes doer. Why? The force of the desires. This is so, the Vijnana, the Vijnanamaya is the doer. The confusion, the wrong identification of myself as the knower and doer is the pitfall called Vijnanamaya Kosha. Do you see the problem here? Knower. I am the knower. Okay. Why is that a problem? Because that, you know, what, what, how much can you know? With a small head that I have, how much can you know? <laughs> small head that one has, not much. For all the things you know, there will be multitudes of things, trillions and uh, trillions of things you do not know. And what you do not know is always more than what you know. What the other person knows is more than what you know. And therefore there is this problem. And what is this problem? The problem is that of smallness. Identifying with any of these koshas leads me back to square one. What is the square one? Smallness. Self not a low thing. Self-critique, self-judgment, insecurity centered on the self. All these are the capital 
all these are my problems because of which I came here to study this. And do you see how the Vijnana Maya keeps me trapped in that? I can only know so much. Okay, maybe I am the doer. Yes, doer of what? You know, when you, when you say I am the doer, there is, there is just a lot of smallness there also. How much can you do? Not much. And whatever you do is finite. So the results of the doing are what? Infinite? No. That's also finite. What do I want? Infinite. The infinite happens to be me. What you want is the infinite and the infinite happens to be you. So it is not a matter of doing. It's a matter of understanding and assimilating. It's a matter of knocking off the pramata, the knower. All other branches of knowledge called aparavidya. Aparavidya means non-ultimate vidya. Aparavidya, branches of knowledge that we need to study. Everything. Botany, biology, biochemistry, mathematics, physics and all the other sciences, history, humanities, arts. All of them. Keep the knower intact. The Vijnanamaya is intact. The Vijnanamaya is not dislocated at all. So therefore, the delusion continues. I am this much. I have this many degrees. I have that many pedigrees. I, this is who I am. This is the knower. And then I do all these things. I do so much charity. I, do, I did all these things. I have all these accomplishments. How many accomplishments can you have? Again, find out. The yearning does not go. That's why even, so even if you have many PhDs, forget even one, many PhDs, still the sense of self loath and insecurity, it does not go. Why? Vijnana Maya Kosha. And all these branches of knowledge, they just put a band-aid on that insecurity. And here, the band-aid is not on a tiny wound. The band-aid is on a, on a gaping canyon. <laughs> there is a gaping canyon. If you put a band-aid, what will happen? Nothing. You can't get a band-aid as big as that. So therefore, I have to see, I have to search for a knowledge and surrender the pramatritvam, the no-worship. This is what is the surrender. Surrender doesn't mean, you know, oh, I just have to find somebody to listen to and whatever they say, I have to listen to. That's not what it is. <laughs> the guru is not somebody who is going to tell you every minute. Yeah, I think it's time for you to go to the bathroom. That's not the guru's job. I think you should have a drink of water. <laughs> now I think you should go for lunch. That's not the guru's job. Guru is Mahavakya Upadesha Karta. The one who teaches Mahavakya is guru. That is what I need the Guru for. Not to tell me what to do. That's not the point. So here it's not about doing. It's about surrendering the Pramatritvam, the no-worship and the do-worship. At the altar, that is the Shruti. This is Shraddha. At the altar, that is the knower. At the, the, sorry, at the altar, that is the Guru. At the altar, that is the Shruti. The no-worship is surrender. In fact, Brahma Vidya is that knowledge which knocks off no worship totally. It's a knowledge without a knower. This is fascinating. Very, very fascinating. In the Keno Upanishad, this is discussed very, very nicely. The student is asked, the teacher asks a question in the class, a quiz. That's how I get the idea of a quiz. So what is the quiz? Who knows Brahman? Raise your hand. My student raises the hand. I know Brahman. And the tea, I know Brahman. Not only do I know Brahman, I know Brahman very well. Sit down, the teacher says. Your, if you say I know Brahman very well, Yadi Manya say Suvedeti, uh, if you say you know Brahman very well, means as an object, like I know pot, 
I know Brahman. If you are looking at it in the same way, then, my dear fellow, the teacher says, I have news for you. Your knowledge of Brahman is like a small dust ball that comes when you sweep your room. <laughs> when you sweep your room, there is some kind of a dust ball. It's even smaller than that, your knowledge. Shut up, sit down. The other one is cleverer. If this one thought, you know, I am clever, the other one thought, I am cleverer still. So I know Brahman, that must not be the right answer. Let me have a go. Yes? <laughs> I don't know Brahman. Miss me, that's the right answer. Maybe that's the right answer. This person is the apple polisher. Means wants to be on the right side of the teacher. Wants to please the teacher. And the teacher says, it's very evident from your face that you do not know Brahman. <laughs> sit down. <laughs> Please sit down. <laughs> and then the right answer is given by a very cryptic student who talks in, in riddles. Riddles means that it's, it's, a, it's a, um, not giving a nod to the paradoxes that's involved here in this understanding. Naham manye suvedeti Nona vedeti vedacha, yona stad veda, tad veda, nona vedeti vedacha. You can see the puns and the alliterations even without knowing the language. He says, I don't say I know Brahman very well. Yet it would be a mistake on my part to say I do not know Brahman at all. And in fact, whoever understands this first sentence of mine that I just said knows. <laughs> knows the same thing that I know in which I am not the knower at all. So this, this knower, the knowership is always connected to identification with myself as the knower in relation to objects. Listen to this carefully. The knowership is connected to my connection. The knowership is connected to objects of knowledge and my relationship to the objects of knowledge. The objects become known, objectified, and I become their knower. This is a big trap. This is a big obstacle into knowing Brahman. That's why people feel Brahman is always elusive and Brahman I don't understand. This is the reason why people feel like this. Because here, the knowing is what? The knowing is connected to not objects, but it is connected to the subject I, a subject that happens to be self-evident, listen carefully, and a subject whose nature is self-evident, self-luminous, and therefore a subject which need never be objectified. It cannot be objectified, but it need not be objectified. Two kinds of things exist in the universe. One is called two categories of things. One category of things is called Pramana Siddha, established by Pramana. Can you give me an example of that? What is Pramana Siddha? Anything. Pen, Pramana Siddha. Pot, Pramana Siddha. Notebook, Pramana Siddha. Textbook, Pramana Siddha. Doors, windows, mic, computer, phones, pramana siddha. I need a pramana. Ears, eyes, pratyaksha pramana. Or I need inference. Or I need anumana, arthapati, some, some pramana I need. The whole world of objects is pramana siddha. The whole world of anatma, not I, is what? Pramana siddha. In the other category comes one thing. What is that? Swatas Siddha. Swatas Siddha means self-established, not needing a pramana. So either it is pramana established or it is self-established. The whole world in which I operate, the whole entire jagat, which I can name, is pramana siddha, requiring a pramana dependent upon a means of knowledge to be objectified. 
but myself the subject does not need a pramana why because it need never be objectified because it is self established swata siddha that's why we keep asking this question what is the question are you here very good yes are you here why to establish immediately to demonstrate swata siddhatvam atmanah swata siddhatvam the fact that the atma is self revealing since it is self revealing it does not need any anything to reveal it and the vijnana maya how does it become a trap it's very clear to see because the orientation is towards knowing and catching objects let me catch hold of this let me do this let me do that the speech and the mind the upanishad says decided one day to go in search of brahman and get brahman back and they advertised it to their village they said we are in search of brahman we are going oh really brahman nobody has been able to bring no we'll catch and we'll bring back and they put tilak on them you know victory uh, this thing may you be victorious they did arati put garlands on them and sent them the mind and the speech have a very special connection the mind is like a uh, you know it's like a it's like a person who is blind walking with a lame person on their shoulders so the lame person is directing go here go there no 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 tree trash come out come this side <laughs> left turn how many times have i to tell you and the blind person is walking lame person cannot walk blind person cannot see and it's a very good combination fantastic combination similarly the mind can have all kinds of fancies mind here i'm using generally includes vigyana maya also okay mind know, knowing everything it includes mind can have fancies mind can have knowledge what's the use the creative expression the speech alone can give blavery speech can give all these all my creative ideas get expression from speech what's the point of having wonderful ideas and remaining in maunam all the time no i want to talk i want to share i want to i want to be here i want to express myself so the and the speech is very in awe of the mind it says oh i just you have such wonderful ideas and the mind says i'm nothing without you you give expression to those ideas and the two of them trotted off to find brahman the story goes they looked everywhere they looked here they looked there and they did not understand that the nature of the looker is brahman <laughs> the nature of the searcher seeker is brahman they did not understand they advertised their departure with much fanfare but they came back and crawled into their houses in the dead of the night when nobody was looking because they came back unsuccessful yato vacho nivartante अप्राप्य यतः यस्मात् कारणात् फ्रॉम विच कॉजलेस कॉज द माइंड एंड द स्पीच रिटर्न डिजेक्टेड अप्राप्य है नॉट हैविंग गेन्ड दैट विच दे वॉन्टेड टू कॉन्कर दे हैव रिटर्न डिजेक्टेड फीलिंग रिजेक्टेड वाई बिकॉज द नोवरशिप इज स्टिल इन प्लेस it is that same mentality which we have in past iteration as pashus pashu means what animals some kind of a bestial residue is still there and it is called the catch kill eat mentality this is what the animals do catch kill swaha <laughs> this is how they live 
when if some other animal has caught it, you fight with the other animal, catch it, kill it, eat it. So much so that this, this kind of a lingo is there in the language also. Once a teenager came to see me in America and then what happened? You know, I say he, he had sat for some important exam. So I asked him, how did you do in the exam? He said, Swamini ji, I killed it. I got alarmed you know, because it was still early days in America. I did not know all the, uh, the slang. Then his mother assured me, no, no, what he means to say is that he did very well. You see, yeah. the same language is, is there. I killed it. I did this. I caught it. I killed it. So as long as this catch, kill, eat mentality is alive, Brahman will ever be elusive. This is Vijnanamaya Kosha, entrapment of sitting in the no worship, thinking that Brahman will deliver itself to me as an object, as an experience, as an exalted, elevated, spiritual experience, whatever it might be. It will not. Dream on, darlings. That's all we have to say. <laughs> Keep on dreaming. It will not deliver itself. Why? Because it is the nature of the one who wants it to be delivered on a platter. The dropping of the catch, kill, eat mentality with, with reference to Brahman shows that I have transcended or crossed over the Vijnanamaya Kosha. I am not trapped in my own do-worship and the sorrow connected to do-worship in the form of regret. Why did I do this? Why didn't I do this? Why couldn't I have known better? How did I do this? All these things. <laughs> this is Vijnanamaya Kosha. And then that is why it's a trap. So next one, Anandamaya. Anandamaya ha kaha. Evameva Karana Sharira Bhuta Avidyastha Malina Sattvam Priyadi Vritti Sahitam Sat Anandamaya Koshaha Etat Kosha Panchakam Anandamaya kaha. Pray tell, oh dear teacher, what is Anandamaya? So, eva meva means in this manner. In which manner? Like the other koshas, this is also a place of entrapment. Eva meva. Like the other koshas, it also is a place of finitude, entrapment, wrong association, projection. And what is that? It's just like sleep. Why? Because there is no subject, the state where there is no subject-object differentiation. Except you may be awake, not just asleep. Sleep is ananda. Even when waking, you have moments of subject-object fusion. <laughs> I have become one with chocolate cake. <laughs> yeah. Ananda. That's why there is Ananda because subject and object has fused. I have become one with the ice cream. I have one become one with the gulab jamun. And then there is no more duality. So the small, small non-dual experiences, when we listen to some wonderful music, you become one with the bhajans and the kirtans. When you go out and you are walking somewhere in the sunset, in, under better weather, okay, yes, yeah, not uh, not in forty five degrees heat, yeah. So when you are walking, let's say one month from now, when it gets more pleasant, you are walking and you are just one with the Ganga, you are one with the mountains, you are unaware of anything else. Your friend has to call you two three times. Wait, I am also coming. <laughs> Wait for me. Then you look and say, oh, okay, okay. Because you have lost yourself. Lost yourself means lost the complaining portion of this jivatvam. Jiva is complaining, yeah. The fusion of the subject and object leads to an instant cessation of complaints. 
that is why one looks to become one with objects events people all the time there is this hunger to become one with things and who is the one that has wants to become one with things the one that is trapped in the ananda by akosha thinking that the ananda is separate from me that the ananda has to be produced by by uh, uh, orchestrating a subject object fusion orchestrating subject object fusion means what you'd say it's a great work, job it's a very hard work very very difficult work it's like that prometheus there was a the greek deity called prometheus and he incurred some kind of a curse he attracted a curse where his job in the night was to roll a boulder up the mountain and then by the when the dawn cracked he would be successful he would put the mountain on the peak he would put the boulder on the peak of the mountain after that in the next two minutes what happened the boulder rolled on the other side of the mountain and then again his job was to because of the curse put the boulder back on top of the peak of the mountain this is our situation ananda maya fusing the subject and object or looking for instances where the subject object fusion can take place instantly is a, is a sad trap very sad trap why because there is nothing that is outside of the subject objects are mithya so objects cannot give sukha why because the nature of the atma is itself sukha swarupa ananda swarupa so what is atma ananda and people will wax eloquent they will say satchidananda and it's translated as existence knowledge bliss with capital b <laughs> what do you understand you think then atmananda is some kind of a special ananda has to be produced specially it's a special experience i tell you if atmananda is a special experience it will be like every other experience what is the definition of experience that which comes that which goes that in which i get into and get out of that is by definition the the uh, experience nature of the experience is finite and if brahman were no matter how special an experience it would also become what finite brahman is limitless so brahmananda what we call brahmananda cannot be outside of cake ananda ice cream ananda mountain ananda ganga ananda river ananda friend ananda gulab jamun ananda all kinds of ananda must be included in brahmananda it cannot be outside cannot be outside how can it be outside if it is outside that means you, you can never either you can never have the, this experience because it's outside of the scheme of things or if somehow i have this experience then what it will also become uh, finite then you can say in meditation i had a brahman experience for how long <laughs> for 2 minutes because as soon as i said yeah this is brahman experience it went away <laughs> came and gone came and gone came and gone what is the use of this kind of an experience we are talking of the content the truth of the experiencer who happens to be totally free of sorrow that exp the nature of the experiencer has to be queried into in order to understand what is this ananda it is not an experience one more experience it cannot be and besides even if you were to accept okay let it be let it be that the ananda is produced by the fusion of subject with object how much effort it takes to have subject and object aligned lot of difficulties are there chocolate cake first of all you have to find out where it is available then you have to find out when you have free time 
in this crazy schedule of classes. Whose idea was this anyway? <laughs> and then you have to see how to go there. You have to become one with that experience. Then having gone there to the place which sells the best chocolate cake in Rishikesh, then you have to stand in line. Why? Because you're not the only one. You're not the only one. There'll be 10 other people who want it exactly at the same time. <laughs> then because of your prarabdha, when you reach the center uh, to the end of the line, what is that? Last piece is either given away or the shop is closed. Not possible. Okay, no, no, the shop did not close. Why are you always thinking of negative things? Give some nice examples. You know, this Vedanta is always a setup. You make it sound like as though it is so difficult to get a piece of chocolate cake. Come on. Let's say I got it. All right. No problem. Granted. Tathastu. Cake is, cake is in your hand. Ahaha. Not yet swaha. Only aha. Okay. Yeah. Between aha and swaha, lot of gaps are there. In English, what do we say? There's many a slip between cup and lip. In Sanskritam, we say there is many there is many a gap between aha and swaha. So many things can happen. An eager dog can come and jump on you. You had not even seen it. Here the dogs are very, very affectionate. Do not make eye contact with them because then they, they are all over you. And so this is, you know, they, they should all have a bold. Super affectionate dog. And so, so the dog just jumps because it's happy to see you out of nowhere it comes. And then the chocolate cake has attained oneness, not with your stomach, but with the Mother Earth. Yes. And then later with the other dogs that have come <laughs> to enjoy the chocolate cake. So see, that can happen. And if you say this is also a very sad story, make it positive. Then... Positive what? Okay, I am I'm ready to eat this chocolate cake. It is in my hand. It is all mine. I have paid for it. Yes. And then suddenly what? Ding, ding. There is a, uh, there is a message on the phone. What is the message on the phone? Some terrible thing happened. Bad news from home. Somebody very sick. And then, God forbid, somebody sick. Bad news has come. Do you feel like eating the chocolate cake? You happily give it to the dog or to the next person in line. You don't want to look at that chocolate cake. You see how difficult it is to align subject and object together. It's not that the chocolate cake is capable of producing happiness. It's not true all the time. Look at this scenario now. Chocolate cake is there, but it is not producing happiness. In fact, the more you look at it, the more sad you feel because your mind is troubled. The karana is not there to enjoy it. The anta karana is troubled. Therefore, the ananda is denied, stamped, you know, denied. <laughs> so the visa to experience ananda is what? Denied. Not permitted. Let's say my mind is fine. The mood is great. But I have stomach flu. Something I ate. <laughs> Or more often, something I drank. Be very careful, especially in this heat. When you go out, don't drink or eat raw things. No raw things. Even though they may say, come on, have me. <laughs> I am wonderful. Even though they say that, you say, no, thank you. Cook things you can have. But not raw things, especially in this heat. So sometimes the raw things you eat, and then what happens to the person? Three days spent in the bathroom. That's what happens. <laughs> Can't come out. And then in such a situation, somebody offers them chocolate cake. What will happen? That person who offers the chocolate cake will get abused. Get out of here. What's wrong with you? Who asked you to bring it? Take this away. <laughs> so the stomach must be okay. The mood must be okay. Chocolate cake must be available. My prarabdha should allow it. So many factors have to come together to produce this measly little ananda. And this ananda therefore has gradations. 
ಇಷ್ಟ ವರ್ಷ ವಸ್ತು ದರ್ಶನ ಅರ್ಥ ಪ್ರಿಯ ಎ ಮೆಂಟಲ್ ಮಾಡಿಫಿಕೇಶನ್ ದಟ್ ಟೇಕ್ಸ್ ಪ್ಲೇಸ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಮೈಂಡ್ ವೆನ್ ಐ ಸೀ ಸಮಥಿಂಗ್ ದಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಬಿಲಾಬೆಡ್ ಸಂಬಡಿ ಇಸ್ ಕ್ಯಾರಿಯಿಂಗ್ ದ ಚಾಕ್ಲೇಟ್ ಕೇಕ್ ಓ ದೇರ್ ಗೋಸ್ ದಿಸ್ ಬ್ಯೂಟಿಫುಲ್ ವರ್ಕ್ ಆಫ್ ಆರ್ಟ್ ಸ್ಮೈಲ್ ಕಮ್ಸ್ ಇನ್ವಾಲ್ವಿಂಗ್ ದ ಶೋ ಆಫ್ ಅ ಫ್ಯೂ ಟೀತ್ this is a modification an internal modification called priya then oh wait a minute they are looking for me i see them asking for me then i say i'm here and then they say they, they say yes this is for you they are coming they are approaching me with the chocolate cake two more teeth are shown <laughs> the smile gets wider pramoda ishta vastu ಪ್ರಾಪಣಾತ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ದಿ ಯುನೋ ಇಷ್ಟ ವಸ್ತು ಪ್ರಾಪ್ತೆ ಫ್ರಮ್ ದ ಪ್ರಾಪ್ತಿ ಫ್ರಮ್ ದ ಗೇನ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಇಷ್ಟ ವಸ್ತು ದ ಚೇಂಜ್ ಇಂಟರ್ನಲ್ ಚೇಂಜ್ ದಟ್ ಹ್ಯಾಪನ್ಸ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಮೈಂಡ್ ಈಸ್ ಕಾಲ್ಡ್ ಅ ಸ್ಟೇಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಮೈಂಡ್ ಕಾಲ್ಡ್ ಪ್ರಮೋದ ದೆನ್ ದಟ್ ಕೇಕ್ ಇಸ್ ಸ್ಟಿಲ್ ದ ಸ್ಟೋರಿ ಆಫ್ ದ ಕೇಕ್ ಇಸ್ ನಾಟ್ ಕಂಪ್ಲೀಟ್ ಇಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಸ್ಟಿಲ್ ಅಟ್ ದ ಆಹಾ ಲೆವೆಲ್ ವಾಟ್ ಕಮ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ಟರ್ ಆಹಾ ಸ್ವಾಹ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ it has to become one with me then it is that that change that happens with the subject object fusion is called pramoda priyamoda pramoda these are the gradations the gradations are there only in the uh, uh, when the happiness is uh, experienced in relation to objects the happiness that is centered on me is nothing um, but constant like me it is constant like the atma it is unchanging it is constant therefore it is free of all gradations no priya no moda no pramoda and in the yagya valkya um, janaka dialogue in the brihadaranyaka upanishad this yagya valkya the teacher tells king janaka tell janaka he rajan bho rajan o oh, king this is the ananda the ananda what where you see nothing as other than you there is always subject object fusion because the object is resolved in the subject the subject is irresolute there is no object outside of me iti gnanena through this knowledge that there is nothing other than me there is nothing outside of me there is only ananda there because it is limitless that understanding is 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 experienced through chocolate cake and all these other small small anandas matra meva anyani abhutani upajivanti all the other creatures in the universe they just are able to partake of a tiny portion of this uh, ananda what is this ananda free of limits because it is centered on myself and it is centered on the knowledge that i am totally free of sorrow why because i am free of finitude i am infinite so there is no sorrow i am the only thing there is there is nobody else other than me there is nothing other than me everything is me and even if you say everything if, you, if it's too much to say everything is me you can at least start by saying everything belongs to me therefore there is no sense of scarcity in the shri rudram we have two parts one is called namaka not namak okay namak means salt yeah namaka <laughs> the other one is called chamaka because it has chame chame ಶಂಚಮೆ ಮಯಶ್ಚಮೆ ಪ್ರಿಯಂಚಮೆ ನು ಕಾಮಶ್ಚಮೆ ಕಾಮಶ್ಚಮೆ ಸೌ ಮನಸಮೆ ಭದ್ರಂಚಮೆ ಶ್ರೇಯಶ್ಚಮೆ ವಸ್ಯಶ್ಚಮೆ ಯಶಶ್ಚಮೆ ಭಗಶ್ಚಮೆ ದ್ರವಿಣಂಚಮೆ ಲೈಕ್ ದಟ್ ಚಮೆ 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 ಚಮಕ ಅಂಡ್ ಇನ್ ಹಿಯರ್ ಇಟ್ ಈಸ್ ನಮಃ 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 ಗೋ ನಮಃ ಗೋ ನಮಃ ದಟ್ ದಟ್ಸ್ ವೈ ಇಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಕಾಲ್ಡ್ ನಮಕ ವೆರಿ ಇಂಟ್ರೆಸ್ಟಿಂಗ್ ಸೊ ದ ಫಸ್ಟ್ ಪೋರ್ಷನ್ ಯು ಸೇ ಇಟ್ ಈಸ್ ನಾಟ್ ಮೀ ಇಟ್ ಈಸ್ ನಾಟ್ ಮೀ it is not me it's not mine it's not me 
It's the Vijnanamaya here, getting rid of this identification of this I am the knower, everything, this belongs to me, this is mine. No, it is not me. It is all Bhagavan, not me. Namaha. Surrender to Bhagavan in the form of all the things that are there in the universe and every single thing is mentioned. Things that are beautiful, things that are annoying, things that are disappointing, things that are frustrating because we are taught in the Namaka to Ishwarize the entire universe of names and forms. To see it as non-separate from Bhagavan. And in the Chamaka, the Chame Chame, and one small note, you know, the Asmad Shabda, the I uh, declines, you know, sometimes there are alternative forms. So, sometimes it is the, uh, the, the may can be fourth case, for me. Ma nau naha, me nau naha. So, me nau naha means may it be for me. Mahyam. Me. Mahyam means for me. And the alternative form is me. And so, at the first glance, the chame, 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 let this be there for this, this, I want this, I want this, let this be there for me, for me, for me, for me. And if you look at the things, they are all nonsensical. You know, why, why would you want a, a ceremonial sacrificial spoon? Why would you want that? Yeah, no reason. And why would you want the, the little, what is that called? You know, the, uh, the thing that is kept over the bullock's uh, neck, a yoke. Why do you want that? You don't, you don't need that. So it's not, uh, you know, after gaining this understanding that everything is Bhagavan, you're not going to be asking for small, small things in the next uh, uh, iteration of the names. Therefore, it has to be taken as sixth case. Mama, everything is mine. Everything is mine. And next stage, everything is non separate from me. Not mahyam me, mama me. Shancha me. This sham is the, uh, is the shanti. That shanti is me, is mine alone. And so therefore, that is atman. In this Chamaka, it's the expression of Atmananda by declaring Sarvatma Bhava. Sarvatma Bhava means I am one with everything. That is the Ananda. I'm non-separate. I'm that, that, so there is no subject-object fusion. One by one doesn't have to take place because I'm, I'm permanently fused with all objects, knowing the Mithyatvam of the objects. I know that. I know that they are just dependent on me. So therefore, I'm permanently one with all objects. Because the objects are none other than me. That Ananda, the all the Anyani Bhutani, Sarvani, all the other creatures, O Janaka, the Brihadaranika Upanishad Bhakya says, Yagya Malkya says, Matra Meva Upajivanti. They just are trying to get satisfied with small, small, little gradations. Little scraps of ananda, like a small doggy sitting at the table. <laughs> and then little roti the owner throws. And then it knows who, who will give, who will not give. It knows it will go and sit right there next to it. And then little more bread somebody throws. This is what the jiva is like. The jiva is being invited to sit at the table. This whole spread is for you. The spread is the jagat. This is everything is you. It's all for you. No, no, I. But what about my scraps? Will I still get my scraps? <laughs> this is the jiva's question. Therefore, Anandamaya is the identification with myself as bhokta. <laughs> bhokta means experience. In fact, one is an experience hunter. One hunts for experiences all the time. Experience hunting, hunting, hunting. And coming to the ashram, one says, I want a really, truly, mind-blowingly real spiritual experience. Whether it's a mundane experience or a spiritual experience, both of them are what? Finite. What you want is the infinite, the infinite 
being you therefore the anandamaya searching for this special experience whether it's religious or secular becomes a trap so let us see the sanskritam here evameva karana sharira bhuta karana sharira bhuta means the stuck in ignorance in the karana sharira in the form of ignorance and then avidhyastha which is in the which is in the causal body in the form of ignorance avidhyastha sitting in avidya malina sattvam malina sattvam means its nature is impure impure priyadi vritti sahitam this also we have discussed priyadi priya moda pramoda they are just vrittis they are just modifications of the mind small small experiences this is good this is better this is best all of it is finite the words good better best priya moda pramoda all this is finite so having the nature of finitude is anandamaya not to be confused with ananda or atmananda and then what else then um, priyadi vritti sahitam uh, existing along with all these modification sat anandamaya kosha sat means existing anandamaya kosha is a, this is anandamaya kosha then he says etat kosha panchakam this is the five fold kosha and concluding he brings a very impadiyam shariram madiya prana ha मदीयम मनश्च मदीया बुद्धि मदीयम अज्ञानमिति स्वेन एव ज्ञायते तद्यथा मदीयत्वेन ज्ञातम् कटक कुंडल गृहादिकम् वेरी ब्यूटिफुल एंड वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट सो he says that there are many things that belong to me in the world and i can say this madiyam shariram this sharira this body is what mine mine indeed is this body and this is the sadhana that is given madiyaha pranaha these pranas are also belonging to me madiyam manaha this mind belongs to me madiya buddhi this buddhi belongs to me madiyam agnyanam <laughs> this agnyanam doesn't belong to the person sitting next to me whose is it mine alone <laughs> that's why i have come for the six month course <laughs> for this removal of this agnyanam alone i have come and so this is madiyam agnyanam i own up the agnyanam as mine alone so इति इन दिस मैनर स्वेन एव स्वेन एव मीन्स बाय इट्स सेल्फ बाय इट्स सेल्फ ज्ञायते इट्स अ नेचुरल नॉलेज दिस बॉडी इज माय बॉडी दिस माइंड इज माय माइंड नेचुरल नॉलेज एंड नेचुरल सेंस ऑफ ओनरशिप इज देयर विथ द फाइव कोशास दिस इज व्हाई लुक एट द कोशास हियर मदीयम शरीरम व्हिच कोशा इज दैट अन्नमय मदीया प्राण मदीय मन मदीया बुद्धि विज्ञान में कोश मदीय अज्ञान आनंदमय दैट यू हेव टू गेट बिकॉज ऑल दि अदर फोर आर एक्सॉस्टेड वेर विल यू गो पारिशेष न्याय मीन्स दट लेफ्ट ओवर लॉजिक या सो डोट डोट बी फूल बै शरीर बिकॉज वी सो दट बॉडी इज Uh, body uh, is the what is that first kosha uh, annamaya kosha sthula shariram and then 
Anandamaya was uh, termed also as Ajnanam. Okay. Karana Sharira Bhutam, etc. So, this is how it is naturally known. My Ajnanam, my body, my kosha, first kosha, second kosha, third kosha, up to the fifth kosha, etc. Tadyatha means, you know, so, just, you know, in the same way it is known. How is it known? Madhiyatvena Gyatam. Just as many things in the world are known as my sense of Madhiyatvena means by a sense of possession. Certain things are known. What are there? Kataka. Kataka means like the uh, bangle. Kataka. Kataka. Bangle. Kundala. Earring. Kataka. Kundala. Griha. Griha means house. Adipadat, Adi means so many other things. Child, spouse, garden, furniture. All this is what? Mine, belonging to me. Sixth case, the genitive case is here. And, and the sixth case in Sanskritam, it is not really a case at all. We have to see whether it's a case because usually the case means it's factors in action. But here it has nothing to do with the verb. Whereas the other cases are directly connected to the verb. One is the subject of the action. Second one is the object of action. The third case is the instrument of action. The fourth case is the purpose for which the action is done. The fifth case is the place of origin of the action. Sixth case has nothing to do with action. Seventh case is again the locus of action. But what is the sixth case? It's the connection between the subject and other subjects. It's a connection between the two things. And what is that connection? It's one of possession. Rama's bow. Ramasya kodandaha. Rama's bow. Rama's sita. Ramasya sita. It is showing the relationship between two nouns. It has nothing to do with the verb. And so here also, all this, this is just showing a relationship between myself and, the th and other things that are nouns in my house, even my house itself. So my bangle, my earring, my chain, my clothes, my dress, and more, most important, my table, my desk, you can't have it. I told you it is prime real estate. My desk. And not only my desk, my spot. Yes, I may be absent for five of the six-month course, but it is still my spot. <laughs> my spot. There is a certain objectivity. When you know it is mine, it's a difference between me. Nobody says me house. It happens in the mind. But still, generally, one is able to be objective. My house. My t-shirt. Although it very quickly becomes me house. <laughs> because supposing I come to your house and say, what a wonderful house. What a lovely house you have. Who says thank you? You say thank you. <laughs> House doesn't say thank you. <laughs> I'm flattered. You say thank you. Means there is a sense of ownership there and, and that ownership quickly recedes into a sense of identification. That is what is intended here. Mama Kundalam becomes aham. You know, it becomes mama becomes aham. That is the idea. So my house becomes me house. What a nice t-shirt. The t-shirt doesn't say thank you very much. The person says thank you very much. I did not compliment the person. I complimented the t-shirt. <laughs> Still the person says, why? Because there is a madhiyatve nagyatam. There is a sense of possession. There is a sense of ownership. And so just like there is a sense of ownership with regard to the house, with regard to the uh, ornaments, with regard to one's watch, with regards to one's clothes. Similarly, the five koshas must be looked upon to have a sense of sanity. Five koshas, you can say, belong to me 
Don't say they are me or I am them. No. You have to extricate from all these five areas of mistakes. This is the very beautiful conclusion. Now the student is very confused. Atma tarhi kaha. Now we have been talking about so many things. You went all over the place. Talked about prana, talked about manaha, talked about all the areas of confusion. Oh, revered teacher, bho guru, I am still confused. Is the Atma there? If so, what is it? Because this is a very important question. Is the Atma there? We have a highly regarded uh, uh, text, Vedanta text called Viveka Chudamani. And there, the teacher uh, deploys the same kind of, uh, what is that, methodology. The teacher deploys this methodology of separation to be able to understand what is remaining is you. You are not the kosha, you are not the prana, you are not this, you are not the three avastas, you are not the three state bodies, you are not the three states of experience, you are not the five koshas. And the student blinks like this and says, I have done this analysis just like you taught me. I have, I have discerned that the co I have put, put aside the koshas. I have taken out from the equation the, the avasthatraya. I have used the sharīratraya prakriya. All these methodologies have been used, but I'm gripped with a sense of panic, oh guru, because there is nothing left. Look, everything has gone. <laughs> Mind has gone, body has gone in this analysis. Everything has gone. Hey. The teacher says, the one who says everything is gone, is not gone. So similarly here, Atma Tarhi, after all this analysis, Oh Guru, I'm not clear about what is this Atma. Kaha Atma, what is this Atma? And then the teacher responds, Satchidananda Swarupaha Satkim so, the teacher says the same thing that was said before. Why? Because the definition of Atma did change in a few pages. That time, what was it? Satchidananda Swarupaha. Now, what is it? Satchidananda Swarupaha. And the student says, what? Satkim. Where have we heard this? Nowhere. Gone. Because I was advised to bring a fresh mind to Vedanta. What is the definition of Sat? Huh? What is the two definitions of Sat we have been studying in the last three days? And here it is. Kalatraya Pitishthati. That Rikala has become Kalatraya. That's all. No other change. Please don't get confused. Same thing. That which is unchanging in all three periods of time. And the other definition is what? Non-negatable. That one is not mentioned because that which is unchanging has to be non-negatable. That which is non-negatable has to be unchanging. Non-negatable and unchanging are almost the same. From two different standpoints, first we say, Abhaditam Sat, it is non-negative. Then you go into this non-negatability of Sat. Why is it non-negatable? Because yesterday it was the same, today it is the same, tomorrow... Show me at least one sign of that. Tomorrow also it will be the same, one and the same. It will not change. But what is this Kala? Kalatraya it says. Kalatraya it says. Kala itself is Mithya. This is important to understand. Because the Atma is not unfolding in time. Kalatraya Pitishthati means it is there in the past, it is there in the future, it is there in the present. Means what? It is beyond time. Beyond time means what? Beyond time means time itself is a product of Atma. And as though product, a Mithya Bhuta product. 
mithya product of atma time itself is a projection of atma atma therefore is not subject to time so trikale api tishthati why because it is akala it has no kala in fact there is no kala there is no such concept of kala it is kalpita kala kalpita means imaginary just on the level of empirical reality which we should not get confused we need a sense of history we need a sense of time and therefore we have divided the time conveniently into years months fortnight weeks etc but there is no such thing as past no no you don't know my past that's why you're telling me <laughs> there is no such thing as past if you knew my past you you would not be saying when is the person recalling the past no ha huh? no the person is not recalling their terrible childhood in the in the past the person is recalling it now and suppose one would one were to have some kind of a mild panic what will i do after this six month course <laughs> will i be still employable where will i go <laughs> will i get a job will i what will happen what will happen if i get the knowledge or oh, no and then what will happen if i don't get the knowledge or oh, no <laughs> when when are you having these musings just now now you are happy you are not having the musings in of the future the anxiety about the future is happening now and the regret about the past or the fear about the past the resentment about the past is being expressed now so if the past and future are not there there is no present either <laughs> because the present is in relation to past and future so if there is no present then what is present now is now now let us measure the length of time called now is now over now whoever said yes see me after class no <laughs> so now is not over now now is still here now because what was over was then ah now we still here is now over now no now is over now no what about now no now what about now no now now what is the length of time called now timeless now is atma the truth of now is atma now is me now is ananda now is timeless and on the canvas of atma the past present and future just manifest and demanifest like waves in an ocean the waves do not take away from the grandeur of the ocean similarly the time concepts called past present future etc do not take away from the timelessness the limitlessness infinitude of atma i i am now this is sachidananda so what is this sat trikale api tishthati but the kala itself is no it doesn't have a leg to stand on trikale api tishthati because the shruti is being kind to us that's why this definition is given kala traye api tishthati iti sat but it means the non negatable i which is here consciousness awareness i am aware of everything i am aware of myself that is what is sat next one chit kim jnana swarupah anandah kah sukha swarupah evam satchidananda swarupam swatmanam vijayat so chit kim what is chit is the next question jnana swarupah usually when we talk of jnanam what happens we think of knowledge of something we think of object jnanam we think of the one who is the knower 
of the objects. Again, when we think of jnanam, we think of that which connects the knower to the known, which is a means of knowledge. So here, jnanam is none of these. That consciousness, that comprehension, that cognition, which has no object. The cognition of I as the subject, for example. The cognition that has no object on the other side. The cognition that has no experience, in particular. The cognition that is just consciousness. When this consciousness morphs into the object of knowledge, I say, no. When this consciousness morphs into the status of knower, I say, Janami, I know. When this consciousness morphs into the knowing, which is in the form of a means of knowledge, I say, I am deploying this particular pramana, sight, hearing, inference, etc. Atma is neither knower nor known nor the means of knowledge, yet the knower cannot be without the presence of Atma. The presence of Atma, the knower is the presence of Atma. That which is an object, it cannot be outside of Atma. The presence of Atma is, is there behind every object. Remember the crow in the peacock convention. Everything is Satchidananda. Shining in borrowed feather are the world of objects. Shining in borrowed feathers. What are the borrowed feathers? Sat, Chit, Ananda. Atma, in other words. It's just Atma. Shining in borrowed feathers are the world of, is the world of objects. Shining in borrowed feathers is the status of thinker, knower. Atma with a feather in the cap. I know. Aham Janami. It's a status. Comes and goes. Like the wave in the ocean. Then I see with my own eyes. That means Atma in the form of the operation of the Pramana to cognize the objects in the everyday. No one known knowledge. All that is swallowed up by Atma. Everything is Atma. Atma is neither knower nor known nor the means of knowledge. This is what has to be understood as Jnana Swarupam. Like now I say, I am conscious of pot. First I say, pot is not outside of consciousness. Pot is means pot consciousness is. Another pot consciousness is. Pot is not outside of Atma. Pot is not outside of consciousness. Pot consciousness is. Thought consciousness is. And then, when I say Atma, what is Atma? Consciousness is. Consciousness means cognition. Cognition means comprehension. Comprehension without subject, without object, without means of knowledge. Simple con consciousness without anything else. It which remains in its own glory is called Jnana Swarupa. All knowing. All knowing. How can it be all knowing? We'll find that out tomorrow because tomorrow is not a holiday for Tattva Bodha. It's a holiday for every other class, but Tattva Bodha, please be here. And what time? 8.15. 8.15 is okay? Yeah. So by 9.45 you'll be free to go in search of whatever it is you want. Om Purnamadav Purnamidam Purnat Purnamudachyate Purnasya Purnamadaya Purnameva Vashishyate Om Shanti 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 Hari Om Shri Guru Namaha Hari Om Thank you.